Good morning, Emmanuel. It is great to be alive, amen, and to be counted in the number. I tell the Lord, thank you this morning. Praise God for our worship. Um, even with, amen, hallelujah. Amen, if you close your eyes, it sounds like a bunch of people. And then you open your eyes, you go, man, that's, that's pretty cool. Amen, and I love, amen, John and, and Ernest. They have really a, a worshiper's heart and uh, just really want to minister God's word through song and music, and it's grateful. I'm grateful for it. Again, because it, it just sets the tone, it sets the atmosphere, it makes uh, preaching very easy. Um, thank God. Can we just give God praise uh, for you this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has commanded me uh, to give him praise for you and all of what you've done uh, for the Emmanuel family. Uh, you guys and gals ultimately make up the body of Christ. Uh, for all the birthday celebrations and Valentine's balls and Christmas parties and baby showers and Sunday mornings from the setting up and the tearing down and baptizing at the lake and bringing worship over there to make that happen and traveling. And it's not easy, uh, but you guys have just relentlessly uh, been, have been patient and um, I'm grateful for you for your diligence and just your heart and the mind that God has given you to serve him first. Notice I said serve him first. When you learn to serve Jesus, serving people becomes easy. Come on and say amen. Serving Christ makes it extremely easy to serve the people. And I'm thankful for you and all uh, again that you have done. And uh, we just are a few hours if we get to live to see a new year. And maybe Jesus will come. Yeah, only one. I'll give you a second. Amen. And uh, that day's coming. No man knows uh, the hour according to the word of God. But as God is my witness, that day is coming. And even when I hear that sound go off on somebody's phone, I am asking Jesus to catch those men who took the life of that police officer who was doing his job. Evil can only run for a short time before it will take an account to Jesus Christ. And God is a God who is a loving God, but he's about business. And uh, I'm just so grateful uh, for what he has done. And uh, listen, I, I do really want to be quick. And you've heard, you say, man, I've heard that a lot in 2023. And you'll probably hear some more in 2024. But I know that the attention span of people is short. And I also know that there is a gap between being able to retain what God is giving you and taking what God is giving you and practically applying it in day-to-day -day living. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and run to the fifth book of Moses this morning. Amen. I'm looking around and folks are saying, what is this brother talking about? I did it on purpose. I know you came to church this morning like, I, I just thought I was going to listen. You got to use your brain this morning. Turn to Deuteronomy, amen. Chapter 12, it's the fifth book of Moses. And true story, I'll tell you how we arrived here uh, at Deuteronomy 12. Uh, all month, I have begged God, uh, looking at the time schedule and where Sunday services were going to, to lie, and I begged God, I begged God a lot, and I begged God, I said, God, I, I, I want to know what you want me to tell uh, the people that show up on the 31st of December. And Tuesday of this morning, and notice I've been asking the Lord all month, and it came right in the end. It's funny how the Lord works oftentimes. And Tuesday morning, this is true. <laughs> believe me or not, Tuesday morning, this doesn't happen often, 
but in one of the most gentle voice. And a lot of times I have those combative moments where I wake up out of my sleep and I'm, I'm going to grab my firearm because I, I almost want to go into protective mode to protect my wife and my children in my house. But this was such a gentle voice. I'm telling you, I, I can't duplicate it. I can't replicate it, but I heard Deuteronomy 12. And I woke up and I went, huh? What did you say? And I thought it was Missy that was talking. And in our room, it was in total darkness. And our monitor, it's one of the ones where the video can go black and you can turn the picture off, but the audio is still playing almost in an ambient noise in the background while we're asleep. And I reached for my phone and it was on the nightstand, uh, the night table next to me. And I looked and it said 2.47 a.m. And I looked over in darkness and I said, Missy, what did you say? Say that again. And her reply was, and I said, Holy Spirit, I know that's you. Now she'll say she don't snore, but if you get with me after service, I have recorded voice memos that are month, date, and time stamped with her snoring in different decibels. And I use them a lot of times just to get on her nerves, but I, I find them quite hilarious. And uh, I knew by her response that that was the Holy Spirit. And Deuteronomy 12, as soon as I, when I went back to sleep, and this doesn't happen often, so I have to write these things down and write them down in my notes because when the Lord does this, when he deliberately speaks to me, I've learned uh, that the way he operates with me is that if I don't write them down, if I don't make a note of it, even my memory being as good as it is in my 40s, for, so for whatever reason, the Lord wipes it from my mind and it becomes almost impossible for me to remember what the Lord has given me. So I wake up uh, the same morning and I go to Deuteronomy 12 and immediately we see what God is saying, a prescribed place of worship. And I get into it and I'm like, man, that's a prescription. God wants to give us a dose of himself in preparation for the year 2024. And the more that I begin to look at the book of Deuteronomy and look at the life of Moses, remember where Moses is in history. Moses has been given a, a DD 214, that's for my military folks. And he's been given a handshake and said by God, thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you've done for the people of God and for the children of Israel. You brought them all the way up into the promised land, but here's the reality. I am actually not going to use you to carry them into the promised land, but I'm gonna raise up a man by the name of Joshua who's gonna carry them into the place of milk and honey that I guaranteed them and assured them through covenant and through agreement that they would secure. And now what Moses is enduring and what he's having to go through mentally, because think about it, you've been used 99% of the time, you've been the prophet, you've been the most humble man, uh, God has even uh, endorsed and said that he's ever created, and you think that you're gonna be that guy, you've had the burning bush moment, you've had uh, the, the rod and the staff that you raised up and has parted the Red Sea and shut down and destroyed the enemies of Pharaoh, and now God says, I'm done with you. Take a seat. I appreciate it, but now's not the time. And now he's trying to seize one last opportunity to prepare these people to go into a place that they haven't even experienced. That he wants to take one more opportunity to remind them of the covenant agreement that God the creator has established with the creation. And what's interesting to me is that what I know about God and his virtue, his nature and his character is that he being the same yesterday, today and forever, Hebrews 13 and 8, he's a God that never changes unlike us, is always in the business of blessing and showing us something that we've never had and experienced before in life. And that even in the newness of us walking into the year 2024, what I can tell you, and it is truly a blessed assurance, is that we serve a God that wants to take us into a new year, but doesn't want us to take bad habits into a new year. That we serve a God that doesn't want us to take old habits into a new year. That, that, that we serve a God, get this, that ultimately 
sometimes doesn't even want us to take some of the older people, I'm not talking about age, but folks that you've hung out with, he doesn't want you to even take them to where you're going into a new year. He wants to change the position and the place where you are. And I know that's been a struggle and a reality for a lot of us. But even when you look at the life of Jesus, think about this. In Matthew chapter nine, verse nine, Jesus meets Matthew. And in the first eight verses, Jesus not only forgives a man of his sins, but he heals a paralytic. And on his way to go back to the city, as he heals the paralytic, he runs in front and encounters a man by the name of Matthew. And the word of God says, Jesus tells him and commands him to leave the tax booth, stop collecting taxes, remove yourself from the people and the job that you've been doing and come and follow me. And the word of God says, as soon as Matthew hears this, he stops everything that he's doing. He leaves the tax booth and he commits his entire life and soul to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. And what I wanna show you is that a lot of times it becomes indicative that God is doing something new within us when he changes the people that we're hanging around and when he takes us out of an old place and places us in a new one. And one of the tenets as I begin to continue to write the business plan for the church and, and I'm continuing to vision cast uh, for, the, for Emmanuel in the 2024 and I'm writing a lot of the tenets down, the Spirit of the Lord simply said, live out your name. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, what I said, live out your name. I said, God, you told me to name us Emmanuel. He said, I understand that God is with you, but a part of your name is that you encounter Christ. I said, yes, God, but still take me deeper, Lord. What do you mean? He says, listen, you in 2024 have to create more opportunities as prescribed places of worship for my people to truly encounter me. I said, God, why? Because we've encountered you all in 2023. The spirit of the Lord told me, he said, because most people in America don't understand having an encounter with me versus having an encounter with church. And I said, yes, God. And I'm writing and I'm writing and I'm scribing and I'm taking it back to the Lord in prayer. And and I said, show me. He said, I did. I woke you up Tuesday morning. And I said, Deuteronomy 12, the prescribed place of worship. And a lot of us have had some bad things happen to us this year. We've climbed out of sickness and unemployment. We've had all types of disappointments and celebrations. We've, we've been up, we've been down, we've been left, we've been right, we've been all over the place. It feels like that we're, some of us that we're still even in the desert, that, that a prescribed place of worship is almost a new thing to some of us. That what we do typically is we take Sunday morning worship and we take it to the desert. Or we take Sunday morning worship and we, just a moment, just a few minutes, what is it, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and then we, we take that into the week. And God is saying in 2024, per Deuteronomy 12, I don't want you to take worship into the new year. I want you to become worship all throughout the year. You, listen to me, you gotta hang on to this. I want you to become worship in the year 2024. God is saying there's a difference than than taking this worship and taking it to the desert, but I'm gonna show you through the word what happens when worship and you being a worshiper collides with the desert, what they create. And there is a collision between worship and desert that's gonna give us peace even while we're in the desert. Because the desert statistically and naturally and scientifically is a very hot place. It's a very dry place. It's lonely. It's quiet. It's arid. It's everything we don't like but necessary for God to move us beyond the right now. It's beautiful. And I even looked and did a a research study in Harvard Institute. Religious research said they asked 100 Christians 
when they hear worship, what is the first thing that come to mind? And 78 out of 100 Christians said Sunday morning. It proves that we still don't get it, that we only associate worship with time and location and that we have not become the people of worship prescribed of God to worship him according to spirit and truth. Say amen. Deuteronomy 12, beginning at verse one. God says, listen, these are the statutes and the judgments which you shall be careful to observe, be careful to observe in the land which the Lord of your fathers is giving to you. Just basic second, third grade English is giving to you. Hasn't given it to you yet like this year, 2024. The reason it's a new year is because chronologically we haven't walked into it. If we are still alive, God is going to give us, give this year to us. He's gonna allow us to walk in it. Young man, I don't even know who you are, but that's something special about you. That man sitting to the right of, of you, Shelly. Y'all, yeah, that's, there's, 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 a, there's a grace God has given him. We'll talk to you after service. And, and there are statutes, again, and judgments which we have to be careful to observe. Which means God is saying, yeah, I, I'm a God of new and, 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 and God is going to allow and is going to give us the new, but it, it's how you carry yourself into the new that's going to mean a lot. Have you, let me, let me, let me make it a little bit more plain. When I was growing up, mommy and daddy, when we were going to somebody's house, let me walk you through the conversation. Son, let me tell you something. We're going over to such and such's house. When they tell you to sit down, you better sit down. Where you go to, where they go and tell you to sit, you better sit. Don't go walking around the house. Don't go screaming. Don't go in there yelling. Don't go in their kitchen. Don't go in their refrigerator. You don't talk when grown people are talking because when adults are talking, that's an adult conversation. If you need something, you need to wait. Don't interrupt grown people when they're talking. Be quiet. Don't go around making a mess. Don't go screaming. Don't go and act anything or out of character because I'm going to tell you something. If you go over to such and such's house and you embarrass me, I'm going to deal with you in their, in their presence. But when we get home, you're going to have to deal with me again. Do you understand? Yeah, my daddy said a thing. I said, yes, sir. Because I know I didn't want to deal with them in front of the folks and family. And I didn't want to have to deal with them when we got behind closed doors. And what God is saying here in the word is the same thing. Listen, I, I, I'm a God of mercy. I'm a, I'm a God of grace. I, I, I'm the God of new. Man, I'm going to give you new. I want you to possess the things that I'm giving you. But don't go in this new land acting like you don't know me. Don't go in this new land and possessing this new year like I haven't laid out the commandments and the statues and the virtues and the law and the mercy and the grace and the abundancy of life that's so everlasting. Don't act like you don't know me because so many of us only pretend as if we know God surrounded around the people of God, but we've got to get this thing deep down in the inside of our souls that way people can see the light of Jesus Christ even outside when we're not at the church church, that people can know that I walk with God, that, that, that there used to be, even when I grew up in church, the mothers and, and, and the deacons of the church, we would have to lay at the altar and tarry for the Holy Ghost, that we, I was even driving to work this morning, and I like to, I like to focus on Sunday morning. Sunday morning is not a game to me. I, I take this very serious. This is my life, and, and a part of worship, and I told my wife, I said, it's a shame that when you turn on the radio, Folks don't even sing about Jesus anymore. It's all about in my inheritance and my overflow and what God is going to give me. And that, well, I said, what well, I told, I told, I said, baby, whatever happened to the songs that just talked about Jesus? What happened to the power of doing the things that we used to do? And when the mothers would, would get you on the altar, and even as a child, you'd even know why you were standing up there and people were sounding different and looking different and dancing and shouting. But when you got the Holy Spirit deep down on the inside of you, it, it, it stayed with you all throughout the week. 
It stayed with you all throughout your life. It, it was just one of those things. And now it's almost like we, we, we treat Jesus like our favorite spice and we shake a little Jesus over our life. And we wonder why every year seems to look like the next that we have no power. We have no victory. We have no hope because we only sprinkle Jesus over our lives and we never say yes to the statutes and the judgments to be careful to observe what God has called us to possess. And all the days that you live on the earth, you shall utterly listen to this. I, I hear this so loud and clear. In the army, we, we say Lima, Charlie, but you shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations that you shall dispossess serve their gods. You see that? God saying, listen, I, I, it's, it's not so much that I want you to go into 2024, right, and, and, and experience the new house and the new car and the new job and the new people and the new friend group, but I'm trying to do something in your mind. I want to change your mentality. Some of you heard me tell this story before. There was this brother and he prayed and he lived in Section 8. And if you know anything, I'm not knocking Section 8. Section 8 is a government housing program that allows people that, that don't have a lot in the moment to, to get themselves on their feet and to actually own a property or rent. And this brother, he, he lived bad and he just prayed, Lord, give me a new, give me a new job. I need jobs so I can have money and do better things. And, and his old neighborhood he was living at, he was stealing satellite cable. And he would tap in, I ain't gonna tell you his name, and he would tap in and get satellite cable. And then he, you know, he, he was, he was, he was, he was kind of ghetto, but you know, he needed Jesus too. And, and, uh, and, and he, he kept doing that for a while. And, and finally God gave him the job, a good job. He made more money than he had ever seen in his life. He finally gets a new apartment, decorates it because he's got the job to be able to do it. God has blessed him, but now he's in a new apartment, but he's still stealing cable. See, God has changed his location, but he's taken that stinking thinking and that old mentality into a new possession. Come on, y'all. And, and God is saying, I don't want you to take your stinking thinking and the old habits and the old mentality with you into a new year. Because even Jesus says, why would you take new wine and put it in old wine skins? You shall utterly destroy the places where the nations which you shall dispossess serve their gods. What is it this year? What is it in these few hours before we see 2024 that God simply wants to get rid of before we possess the land? Is there something in between head and heart that God utterly wants to destroy? Is there something that you worship in, in, in your life that you've placed just a little bit more higher than the worship that God is due? Is there something that you worship and give reverence to that seemingly has taken the place of the worship of truth and spirit between you, God, and the creation? Is, is there, is there, what is it that has to be destroyed before we see this new year? What monuments have you raised up that has become platformed and pedestaled and exalted and magnified over the worship that God has prescribed for his people. Help us to see it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You should dispossess and serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. You should destroy their altars, altars, a place where things come to die, but also a place where things are worshiped. And a lot of times we don't even realize it through idolization and even some of us struggle as parents because we put our children in as high as they can be lifted up until they hit us with an old pill and give us a pill or a prescription of disappointment and you go, oh, God had to bring you back down to reality because you thought your child was the best thing since sliced bread, that even the people closest to you, you'll understand if your children are small, they'll grow up. Disappointment happens. Life happens. We idolize parents, even our children at times, and God is saying, you have to move everything out of the way. I am the only true and living God. No one gets more adoration than me. No one gets more honor than me. No one gets more praise than me. Nobody gets anything above me because I am the Lord God. You should destroy the altars and break 
the things that they've called sacred. My Bible has sacred italicized. I wish I had time to dig a little bit deeper, but there's something sacred and biblically uh, majestic even in what God is saying here through sacred pillars. And they burn their wooden images with fire in which God had commanded even from the beginning that you would have no graven image or anything like God or God-like that would be placed in worship above him. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names. They have names. There's something about the name. You will destroy their names from that place. You shall, listen, to it. you shall not worship the Lord your God with such things. God says, don't even think about walking in the year 2024 with bringing them other gods with you. Destroy them right where they stand. Remove them from your life. Remove them from your heart. I want to give you a new land, but I don't want to put an old man in new land. I want to put a new man and a new woman in new land. Thank you, Jesus. Verse five, but you shall seek the place where the Lord God has, cho has chosen. Underline that if you like taking notes and like to highlight and bubble. Are you, have you, have you, are you in the place that God has chosen you? A lot of us mistake being comfortable and being financially comfortable and being happy uh, as, a, as a place that God has told me to be. Has God chosen that place where you are right now? And don't answer that. That's between you and the master. But this is where we talk about prescribed place of worship. This is how it happens. It's seeking out the places that God wants us to be and seeking out the person that God ultimately wants me to become. There's nothing greater than that. And there's a freedom in that. And I tell folks all the time, God, Jesus Christ has delivered me from a lot of things, Sister Marie. And one of the greatest things he's delivered me from is from the opinions of other people. Even the people closest to me and my family. I don't care what people think about me. I walk so comfortable. There's such a freeing and not having to walk around on eggshells and pretending to be somebody I'm not. I'm secure in my identity in Jesus Christ. I don't care what the world thinks of me. I don't even care what the saints think about me. I know who I have been created and destined to be. And it all started with me seeking out the places where the Lord has chosen for me. Many children arrive to chosen places that their parents choose, but God never chooses. And I know that's tough because even culture and society says, look, go to school, graduate, go to college, get a great job, climb the corporate ladder of success, become whatever you want to be. As long as you're living good and you portray and create this image, everything is all good. But what if that is only a graven image and a place that God's never chosen for you? How many of the people of God spend decades outside of the will of God? Think about it. Has he chosen this place? And have you seek, have you sought out and seeking the things of God. And God chooses out of all the tribes to put his name for his dwelling place. Put the name of Jesus. Put Jesus on it. Put Jesus on it. Put Jesus on your heart. Put Jesus on your mind. Put Jesus on your car. Jesus on your home. And we say, man, what are you, what are you talking about? Now, nah, look, everywhere should be a place of worship. Because now I am becoming a worshiper. So everywhere that I go, because I am the church, is a place of worship. I don't need, listen, amen. I don't need Sunday morning to worship my God. Do you know I've had moments and encounters with Jesus Christ when I left, when I used to work in Charlotte? And I've had moments where I am telling you what, I cannot make this stuff up, that I get into a place with the Lord. My eyes are so filled with tears. I don't even know how I make it home. My steering wheel turns into an altar and my, my truck is a place of worship. 
I'm desperate for an encounter with Jesus Christ. I don't need an encounter with church. I need an encounter with Jesus because if I can have an encounter with Jesus, I can be saved. I can be delivered. I can be set free. I can be made new. I can be made. I can be justified. I got hope. I got peace. I got love. I got grace. I got mercy. I've got everything I need according to the word of God. Thank you for his dwelling place. Thank you, Lord, for putting your name on us. Therefore, you you'll take your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes. Come on, worship. The, uh, your tithes and the heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your free will offerings, the firstborn of your herds and your flocks. And I want you to listen. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God. Take it all. Take it all. Every offer, every sacrifice, your tenth. Bring, bring it all. We're about to party. We're really, you know, I, listen, I know we, we go, man, can't wait to see the ball drop. Kiss my favorite person. Uh, uh, toast the, the glass of champagne. Ah, uh, listen, I'm bringing, I'm, I'm bringing my tithe. I'm bringing my sacrifice this year. I, 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 even in me, I want to do better for the name of Jesus Christ. I want God to make up the deficit of even where I fell short as a pastor this year. Cause I'm, listen, I'm okay. Didn't I tell you a little bit a while ago that I'm comfortable with where I, who I am and my skin? That, that I'm honest, I'm authentic. And this, listen, this authenticity that the Holy Spirit has put in me, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And the reason it does is because you're okay with walking around and living a double life. You're okay walking in an identity that doesn't even belong to you. And I'm authentic enough to tell you that I've missed the mark in so many ways. As a pastor to this church, you have no idea opportunities that I missed because I, were, I was not where God told me to be. Things that I was supposed to say because when my ears should have been glued to the mouth of God, it was glued to the mouths of everybody else. The folks that I should have even asked for their forgiveness and said I'm sorry, even in their wrong and in my right, I didn't do it out of disobedience. There's a laundry list of things that I did not do this year and it affected you as the body and I'm going to be held accountable for it on the day of judgment and that's what I take to my bed every night when God closes my eyes and wakes me up in the morning to show you how important it is for the Lord God to prescribe us as worshipers because a worshiper understands truth and spirit not only two requirements in order to be a worshiper, but now because we understand who Jesus is, the spirit of truth, anything that's not truth is exposed as a lie. And any lie that we've been living in and any false identity that we've attempted to grab a hold of, the spirit of truth, because we're talking about worship, surrounds us and comes out and flows through us and begins to clear a path that God can make straight. This is why it's so important to function in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because him being the smartest and the most loving individual, here, right here that lives inside of you and on the earth, he's able to create these new possessions and to take us out of the old and prepare us for the new. Because a lot of times there's a mishandling of the new it's because we didn't let God do the new thing in us first. We celebrated the new possession, but never take time and never took the time for God to make us new. That's why when a lot of times God gives us a new thing, we drop it, we fumble it, we mishandle it because we really weren't prepared for it. And what I've seen God do a lot of times is he'll let us possess a thing knowing that we're not ready for it to prove that we're not ready. And there you should eat before the Lord your God. You should rejoice in all to which you have put your hand and your households, and in which the Lord God has blessed you, you should not at all do as we are doing here today. You see that? It's in the, I'm, I'm just reading the Bible. This ain't my word. Look, you shall not at all do as we are doing here today, chronologically. Jan, uh, December 31st, 2023, today. 
every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. This is the ultimate, highlight this in your, in your Bible. This is one of the ultimate kryptonites for the movement of the kingdom of God and the body of Christ is when we make decisions for the body as pastors, as elders, as leaders, husbands making decisions for your families and your household, you are making decisions based on what you deem is right in your eyes. But let me set the record straight. Oftentimes your definition of right is on a different planet than what God has deemed to be right. You think it's, you think it's only that distance. No, it's light years away. Because what he's deemed to be right versus what you've deemed to be right are two totally different rights. And we have fallen so far from this reality that we'll take all of what we've done in two, th I mean, it worked, Eric, it worked. I did it in 23 and it worked. What's the problem with me taking it and we keep doing this thing and it's lunacy over and over and over and over again and wonder why there's no peace, there's no hope, there's no victory. Because you keep moving, you're like the hamster in the hamster wheel. You're looking crazy. I got one more verse. Deuteronomy 2, get that real quick. And then I'm going to shut up and we're going to worship. Deuteronomy 2. This is the desert years I talked about earlier. Come here, uh, Celine said, hurry up, Papa. We almost done. Deuteronomy 2, then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea. Right? This, 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 look at what they're doing. They turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, right? God had delivered them. Moses did the staff thing. Pharaoh and his army's been destroyed. We've got to be going in the right direction. This has got to be it, Ross. I mean, look what God just did. He destroyed the enemies that were behind us. I've got to, I've, I've, I know I'm going in the right place. God speaks up and says, you have been skirting this Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me saying, you have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn around and go northward. For a lot of us, God is sick and tired of seeing us skirt the same mountain over and over and over and over again. Skirting around that mountain when she comes. Cliff be going around the mountain when he comes. Going around the mountain, he'll be going around the mountain. He'll be going around the mountain till Jesus comes. And God says, I'm, I, I, I love you, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired of seeing you make that same trip. You know why? Because that even the direction I've, and the path I've chosen for you. Stop. It's lunacy. It's ludicrous. Why? And if you're honest with yourselves this morning, you know there have been portions and pieces of your life that you've been the dog that's been chasing his tail. Your marriage and the results of it is proof. The relationship that exists between you and your children is proof. The relationships on your job and the things that happen in life is proof. They're skirting around the same mountain over and over. And look at the love, look at the love, John, Sully, look at the love of God right here in this moment. Right? Real love says, I'm going to stop you from doing the same rotation and the same thing, expecting a different result. Then we get mad when God comes and throws a monkey wrench in our plans because we've deemed it right in our eyes when it's nothing but his abundant mercy and love that says, I'm tired of you looking crazy. Come and be and do what I've called you to be. Then we get upset when God, when he says, I'm just here to save you because I love you that much. And you skirt it and you skirt it and you skirt it. And what the spirit of the living God has told me in preparation for 2024 is it don't enter into this new year without him, but walk in this new year with him. Don't start a business without him. Don't say I do to that man or that woman without him. Don't jump in a business relationship or a natural relationship without him. Don't sign the dotted line without him. Don't buy that car, don't, buy, don't do nothing without him. 
He doesn't want to spoil your party. He wants to make sure that you make wise decisions and include him. He's a good God who loves you enough to tell you to stop skirting around the mountain. It's been a desert year for a lot of us. But when worship, and I don't have time, but when worshipers collide with the place of worship, where there's desert, where there's wilderness, the valley or the top of the mountain, there's truly no limit to what God is able to do. I'm sick and tired of church folks encountering the church and leaving the same. It's time for folks to start encountering Jesus and leaving different than the way they showed up. We keep counseling stuff that needs to be cast. And you wonder why there's no change. It's because you haven't experienced an encounter with Jesus Christ. Stop doing old stuff expecting a new result. Stop chasing the tail around the mountain and turn northward in the direction that God wants you to go and become in 2024 whatever God wants you to be. Come on and say amen. Standing all over the room.